Well, this is gonna be a fun day today. We are actually up in Blaine. We've driven all the way up here. Blaine is almost at the border of Canada. Mm -hmm. And behind us here is a 5300 Navigator, uh, 1999. It's on the hard. And we are gonna take a tour of it. Can't wait. Hopefully uh, we'll get some good footage for you. We are up in Blaine and we are um, up here to take a look at a 1999 5300 Navigator. As you know, we've been looking at Navigators for a while and um, now we're seriously looking at them. So right now I am actually in the cockpit and um, you can see that it is fairly wide. Uh, you can put some chairs out here. It does have a uh, crab puller and it's also got a, a fish thing we don't fish so you know fish thing it's got rod holders so this has definitely been a fishing boat and it looks like it's got some storage um, under here as well um, and then sliding doors and that will take us into uh, the salon it also looks like they have on either side port and starboard uh, engine controls here that should hopefully make for easy docking so now you're going to go down and check the... Yeah, let's go take a look at the engines. Okay. See how bad it looks or good it looks down here. It's kind of filthy, so... Don't get too dirty. Nope, I'm not going to go too far in here. Okay. Actually, you know, it has pretty good space down here. Don't have to sit at the crawl. That door up this, there in the front, that's the pantry door that leads into the galley. So that's where the access is. We have our battery banks here. The engines look like they're in pretty good shape. They were just rebuilt, I believe about a year, year and a half ago. So they only have about 300 hours on them. It looks pretty good down here, all things considered. A couple things to keep in mind. We are in the salon. One of the things um, that we liked about this was it was very live aboard light. Now you'll notice where I'm standing, there happens to be no furniture. So typically there would be a couch here. Um, so it looks like it's gonna need a couch. Um, this table then actually goes, it went in front of the couch. So I'm not sure they're moving things around. And it looks like they've got a TV down there and a stereo equipment. One thing I like about the uh, this Navigator is this galley. The galley is very like something you'd have at home. It has huge counter spaces. Look at the sink. It's a double sink, the same size you'd probably have in your home. So this was a huge selling point for us uh, when I saw the pictures on this boat. It has tons of storage. Um, it would need some upgrades. I mean, it's got a trash compactor. Not sure if we need one of those. I don't know how old this microwave is. Maybe 1970. I'm joking, but honestly, probably get a new microwave. Um, it does have just a stove top and no oven. So you could do some different things here. You could get rid of your compactor, put in an oven. Um, it's got lots of storage here as well. I love that. Um, it's got a knife holder and it's got a fairly big Decent size fridge. I know, I have seen some of the alligators that actually do have ovens. So did they convert that to storage under there then? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, and then... And plenty of storage on the other tons side. Tons of well. storage. I mean, look at all that. So, I mean, I think the cabinets probably need you know, some work as well, but you got storage up here. I mean, you just have a lot of storage. So if you're gonna live on a boat, I think that that is crucial. I'm also curious what's under there. So let's take a look. I believe that is the pantry or an extended pantry. Yeah, look at that. So that is forward of the engine room. And so you can access it either through the engine room or through the galley. But there's plenty of storage, whether you use it as a pantry or just storage for whatever else you have on the boat. Again, you know, if you're going to go, this is an ocean worthy boat. So if you're going on yeah. a long journey, you're going to want to store a lot of provisions and that is a fantastic place for it. So let me see if I can't get a little bit more. Yeah, 
plenty of space down here. And again, access to the engine room. Continuing through the salon, we have more storage. So you could use this for um, pictures and you know home things that you might have. So and you notice there's a ton of counter space over there as well. So I love that you got more up here. Um, not that you might have a lot of pictures, but again, if we're gonna live on it, we want it to be very home-like. So we're gonna go up onto the bridge. And uh, what's nice about the bridge is you've got really great visibility uh, from the bridge. Um, we also have a dinette area, and that's one thing we missed in the old boat, if you recall. When we were upstairs on the flybridge, we didn't have anywhere people could eat. Um, this could also be used for an office. In fact, both of us could probably work here, or one could work down below in the in the um, galley, and the other person could work up here. So it could be used as um, a work from home location. Um, nice bridge here, uh, and again, it's comfortable with just tons of visibility, um, and that's one thing that I think is important to us, especially on a 53 foot boat. Another cool feature of this navigator is it has pilot house doors. So, uh, and when you go out here, what I also love is the walk around. They are wide, wide enough for me. Um, and that's important. We've been on a couple boats, sorry, that was a spider web. Been on a couple boats where it would be hard for me to get around. And I like the height of these rails. So when I'm hanging on for dear life, um, these are here. And then this one can lift up and you can have access to the dock. So why don't we go downstairs and take a look at the staterooms. I'm guessing that this is the, we don't know what this is. Maybe this is, this the, is the master. This is the master. Yeah. Okay. So, so unfortunately cool. the lights are not on, uh, but we'll make it work. Um, you see me. Yeah. So it's a full beam master walk around queen. Yep. Full walk around here. Watch me. I just got caught on that. <laughs> she can do it. That's she why those it. those why those push in. Yeah. So full walk around. So in there are the washer and the dryer. So that is, I think, the dryer. The washer is in here. That's interesting. I honestly don't, don't know, know how you would ever service those unless there's access from the back. Oh, this is how this must. So that folds open. However. I still don't know how you would get those out of there unless you can do it from behind. That's a funny smell. There's plenty of in the head. Sorry that it's dark. They don't have the boat plugged yeah, in. Pretty good storage. So we don't have we any go. lights. But it has a full separate, separate shower, shower enclosure. It looks like electric toilets. Nice vanity. Again, plenty of storage here. And then as we move forward in the boat. The next middle room is bunk beds. So we have a nice little double berth here. And we have a little bit of storage. And then in this forward. The forward VIP berth. Yep. Um, so again, you know, one thing about this is it would be hard to get up in this bed. Um, it looks like they need well, a they have They have steps. Oh, they have steps. They have steps on either side, but still. But those are hard to get, trust for, me. For little people like you, Allie. Yep. Got lots of storage. Yeah. Um, it looks like that probably needs to be adjusted. Um, and, uh, but again, we don't use this room, so it wouldn't be ours. Mm -mm. And then it does have another, um, head, right? Yeah, this should be the other head. Right here. Okay. So we have a, a, a mid-cabin yep. or midship cabin. Or we have a midship head. Oops. Thank you for lighting that up. Pretty much the same as the other one. A little smaller, but again, small vanity, separate shower stall, and an electric toilet. Then, lastly, they also have a flybridge. So, so far we've had an entertainment uh, section in the cockpit. We've had an entertainment area in the salon. We've got one right here in the bridge, and now we're gonna go up to the flybridge. Well, the flybridge has a tons of seating, and it does have a crane for a dinghy. The strange thing is it also has this. 
it must have been used for offshore uh, fishing because this is a ginormous freezer. Um, I mean, I guess it could be cool if you were a little bored and you had this big of a freezer. Um, but it also takes up a ton of space. So yeah, you'd think you'd maybe either want a wet sink, a, know, wet kind bar. Of a wet bar, barbecue, ice maker, refrigerator, combo. I've seen that on other boats. In fact, I think the one we're looking at later is going to have a wet bar, okay. ice maker, fridge type of combo. And I don't even know how you would get this off of here. I, you'd, need you'd use the crane. Oh, you'd <laughs> you'd have to get it up over there and get it off. Yeah. It's actually surprisingly not that heavy though, because it's all hollow. Yeah. So. Um, so this is it. Um, one thing though that we didn't tell you uh, at the beginning of this tour and we did not know until we got here that the reason this boat, so the price of this boat is $199. Most navigators of this size are around $250 to $270. Why so cheap? You know, I'm like, well, it's because it's on the hard. It does need new bottom paint. You'll see that below. Turns out that it sank at the dock in Anacortes. Um, they got it out immediately. Um, they've rebuilt the engines. They replaced the carpet. They did uh, some woodwork uh, repair, but you can definitely see where it definitely went under. Um, and it has a slight smell. Yeah, well, you can get rid of that with, you know, new carpet and yeah. revarnish some of the wood. And they say everything works on it. They've had it in the water since it sunk. Um, but you know me, and uh, that freaks me out a little bit. So, but considering it was underwater, it actually looks... It looks really good. I, I've seen books that haven't been on water that look a lot yeah, worse than this Yeah, so one. considering that, it actually so. looks really good. Um, but there's just something, I don't know something about it i think it's still the model it just might not be the boat today we get to go look at another navigator we got a sneak peek yesterday uh it's a 5300 as well it's a 1995 mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna meet with the broker and get a full tour of it so we're excited to take you along um, this has been a really kind of an eye-opening weekend and even a time uh, in our lives that we've talked about, especially with the pandemic. Uh, I've lost some friends um, uh, due to illness. And I think this weekend really kind of brought to life that we're really focused on trying to make this work for us. Mm -hmm. um, life is short yep. and you gotta live- Appreciate what you have and who you have. And you gotta live in the moment um, and not say, oh, someday, someday in the future. Our biggest challenge, we would probably put an offer on this boat today that we're gonna see, but we gotta find a place to put it. Yep. Um, our whole goal is to be a liveaboard. And so what does that mean? Is there, are there liveaboard marinas that are not in Seattle that w we could commute from? Um, I don't know. We're going to figure that out, mm -hmm. but we're going to take you on a tour today and uh, we hope you like it. We met with the seller's broker, Corey, okay. and he showed us around the boat. Immediately from the time we entered the salon, we could tell this boat was different. Different than the one we viewed the day before. Being a 1995 and four years older, the boat was in pristine condition. You could tell the previous owners really had taken care of her. The salon had a leather sofa to port and a brand new Thomas Paine rocker recliner to starboard. The woodwork throughout the boat was in perfect condition. The salon also featured a wet bar and refrigerator and TV for entertaining. Access to the master suite is also located in the salon, but more on that later. Moving forward and up a couple steps, you enter the combo galley and lower helm station. The combo features a leather L-shaped settee with plenty of storage under the cushions and a large solid surface table which can work as an area for food prep, dining, or even a home office. It too offered more storage. I will say the lower helm was a bit of a tight fit. It offers all the necessary gauges and electronics, albeit a few years old, but the wheel was a bit close to the seat. I would anticipate not having to use the station very often, as most navigation would be done from the flybridge. One feature we did like, unlike the first navigator we viewed the day before, is that this one had pilot house doors on both sides of the house. Very convenient for external access, docking, and cross-ventilation. 
Moving forward and down a few steps, the boat was much like the other navigator. Twin bunks to port with the required washer dryer in the closet, shared day head to the starboard with separate shower, and a VI pre berth fully forward featuring a step up queen berth and lots of storage. Great hanging locker. Oh my gosh, look at that. Thing's huge. Okay. Returning to the salon and going down the stairs master. to the master suite, we like this setup as the owner's cabin is separate from the guest, oh. is the full beam walk That's around queen bed with around. numerous hanging lockers for storage. The master also has its own head and storage. shower. We can't say enough about what a great setup this is. Old Next, heading up to the flybridge, oh, yeah. we have another wet bar and refrigerator, helm station, 12 foot center console, Carib tender, oh, and crane. Okay. And you can even the current owner is also installing a brand new waterproof sombrella bimini and full canvas enclosure for the benefit of the new owner, which can be fully enclosed to protect the bridge when not in use. And finally, returning to the engine room, it is clean, well organized, and gives you a full all around access to the engine for maintenance. Overall, very impressive. Well, as we suspected, that was a gorgeous boat. Yeah, it's a beautiful boat. Yeah. I mean, it has everything that we could possibly ask for for a little board. I mean, tons of storage, huge stateroom. Yeah. Washer and dryer. Washer and dryer. Water two, maker. 200 gallon fresh water tank. Yep. Um, huge kitchen sink. Lots of counter space in the oh, yeah. kitchen. Um, the, the owner has kept it up. And he's meticulous. Meticulously kept it up, even <laughs> though is, he hasn't really used it in the last three years. Yeah, and so. uh, the previous owner to him, he bought it from the original owner. He also was very meticulous, and that's important to us. Our last boat, um, the owner was very meticulous. And so, I um, guess we got some thinking to do on the way home. Yeah, a lot of conversations to be had. So, I think we're going to make some phone calls, see if we couldn't find a slip for it. And well, run... the broker said he'd work with us on the slip. Yeah. So, so run some numbers, I they guess. They have is... space here in Anacortes. They have space in Seattle that they could work with us on to basically make sure that that's not a part hindrance. of uh, the deciding factor. Yeah. So I guess we have to crunch some numbers. Some big numbers. We'll see. So much for our six months of saving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. <laughs> More to come. So those boats couldn't be any more different from each other. One that has sunk, one that was looking great, only two owners. <laughs> I mean, they took impeccable care of that boat. Um, we walked away feeling about as excited as we possibly could. Um, I mean, it, it checked every, every, every single box. box that we could think of. Yeah. Um, although there's one major box that it still doesn't check and that's where do we put it? Yeah. And you know, one of the things, you know, we went, when we left Anacortes and we were just so excited that day and we're like, we're, we're going to start making phone calls. Oh, yeah. We're going to call everybody, our broker, we're going to call our finance person. And in the end, there's nowhere to put it. No. Nope. You know, we could find a temporary place for it. There were a few places that said, mm -hmm. hey, you know, it's including the other broker, the sale, selling broker said, hey, if you really, we don't want this to be um, a reason why you don't buy it, but it would only be temporary. Right. You and know, I don't want to get, no offense, but I didn't want to get stuck with a boat that's a quarter of a million dollars and have to pay for where we live. Yeah, when they when they say temporary and then all of a sudden it's not temporary anymore and they need that space, right. what do you do? So, so we decided it's just, we know the boat that we like now. Mm -hmm. um, maybe oh, yeah. perhaps it will become available. I think the reality is we need to find a, a boat that comes with a liveaboard slip, mm -hmm. I think is going to be the reality. Unless there's a fluky thing or some guy knows someone who knows someone, because everything we've read about, if you get a slip that's on Lake Washington or Lake Union especially, uh, or in the cut, those are people who, um, they don't advertise. Right. They're, they're who you know. They're private marinas, they're, small private marinas. Yeah, and you know, there's everyone's out there. We gotta walk the docks. We're trying to do that. We're trying to get the word out through the blog, uh, but so are a million other people. So, yeah. 
um, we don't know what we're going to do. And uh, it's kind well, of... We're going gonna to take our time yep. and make sure the right decision is made for the two of us. Yeah. Uh, no point in jumping in anywhere. Uh, but at least we've done the tour. We know what we like, at least from that point. Um, we have a few more tours that we do have uh, scheduled. And uh, so we're not going to rule out. We'll look at a trawler. We might look at a sailboat. Um, I look at a catamaran. Mm -hmm. So this was just the start, but that is definitely the Navigator 5300. is definitely the power boat that we so far are favoriting. Absolutely. So, so we'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. So be sure to tune in next week. Um, I actually interview my nephew, Jake, who has a Boston from Whaler. From State Farm? No, he's not oh. from State Farm. Okay. But he does own a Boston Whaler 170 Montauk, and they keep it up at the beach, and I wanted to spend time with him and find out what does he do with the boat, how does he like it, how long has he had it. So if you're a Whaler fan, this is an interview that you want to uh, tune into. Mm -hmm. So if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to leave your comments down below and be sure to subscribe. Ring the little bell up at the top so that you get notifications for future episodes. Thanks you guys for following us. We really appreciate it. Thanks.